Hello everyone and welcome. My name is XSlamFox and today I wanted to cover um, just some tips to help you out with the new Wave Rider quest that came with the Parvos update last week. Um, this quest gives you the Warframe Yureli, which is like a water Warframe, um, but to be able to do the quest it requires several K-Drive um, challenges. Um, it's five sets of five K-Drive challenges. So what I want to go over for you guys is the best way to get prepared and get set up for these K-Drive challenges and maybe a couple mods that might be able to help you out a little bit. Um, so the prerequisite for the quest is just to have done the Vox Solaris quest on Fortuna. So make sure you at least have a K-Drive. After you've accepted the quest, um, you can see the challenges every time you go into Fortuna. I did this entire quest just on solo in Fortuna. It usually involves um, just doing little K-Drive tricks. The first set of five tricks that you have to do are just to kill five enemies, um, do a couple grinds. You can do these on basic rails like these ones right here. Um, you can kill enemies just by pulling out your secondary weapon with F. Just give them a couple little shots. Um, after that, um, there you had to do like a single trick worth like 100 points, and you had to do a single K-Drive race. Um, so I'll just give you a couple little tips on how to get prepared and how to get started for these challenges. Um, every time they tell you a trick and how to do it, what they're not telling you about the trick um, is that you usually have to be jumping in the air first. So almost all of these tricks you have to jump first. And then on top of that, almost always it's better to enter the key button first and then to press um, the mouse second. So I know it says plus together, and I know it usually tells you the mouse input first, and then it tells you the directional thing. But you can see from me just testing it out around here, um, this is me pressing the mouse first, and then doing the key second. Um, they don't tell you this, but what you should be doing is make sure you press the directional key first, and then press the mouse button second. The first trick that they want you to do right here, they want you to do like a little side roll. Um, this is me pressing both of the buttons at the same time. This is just the normal side roll. But what they actually want you to do is be going to the side already. So like hit D first and then hit the, the right click after. If you do it while you're not moving, sometimes it can have difficulty registering what kind of trick you're doing. So the best thing to do is start moving first. So move right, hit D first and then um, hit the trick button after. Um, again, this takes like a little bit of experimenting and a little bit of figuring out. Um, so this one, for example, the front side clutch, what you want to do is you want to jump and then hit the direction that you want to move and then hit the mouse button second. So you want to do the opposite order of what it tells you. So start off with a jump, um, do your directional input, and then press the mouse button after. Um, a couple of these combos, as they start to get a little bit later on, um, you'll have to do directional mouse buttons and hit the mouse buttons at the same time. But for right now, um, I'll just go through the basic challenges and hopefully I can give you guys like a quick little easy way to figure out all these challenges. If you're having trouble with the tricks and you just don't have enough points or enough time to get these tricks actually done, my recommendation to you is to build up a little bit of Vent Kids standing and you can buy mods. Um, there's a couple really important mods. One of them is Airtime. Um, when you have airtime, it reduces your fall speed. Um, here's a really good spot for when you want to get like a high trick combo or a long trick combo. As long as you're grinding, your trick counter won't end. So if you ever wanted to do a high point trick combo, come to one of these rails right at the front of Fortuna. And all you have to do is jump up on the rail, hold left control so that you start grinding, and then just grind all along the rail. And um, as long as you jump, and do tricks, you will increase your trick multiplier. And as long as you're grinding on the rail, your multiplier won't end. Um, this was just how to do headshots, very easy. Pull your gun out, shoot people in the head. Um, another one of the things that they want you to do is they want you to complete races. Um, these races, they give you standing. Um, you can see the races only when you're on your K drive. So make sure you get on your K drive first and then press and hold M to open up your map. That way you can right click it and you can assign like a little waypoint for you to go to. Um, these races give you vent kids standing, so it's a really good way to grind up standing. But also um, these races are really important. They give you like a lot of experience and it's the goal of the quest right now. 
So what's really important to know about these races, I'm gonna head over to this race in a second right here and I'm gonna show you something about the races which you might not know just by looking at it. Um, this is a really good rail if you wanna do long tricks. You just do tricks in a circle on this rail and it loops back onto itself. But um, let me take a second and I'm gonna edit myself over and I'm gonna go show you one of the races. So the important thing to know about this race is you can see how many points it's going to give you. This race is going to give you around 3,400 points. So before you even start the race and before you put in the time and the effort, you know about how many points this race is going to give you. This race is going to give you around 3,400 points. What you should know is the longer it takes for you to complete the race, um, the less points you get. And the faster you complete the race, the more points you get. So the people in first, they have really good K-drives, um, they know the races, they practice them a lot, um, they have upgraded mods to be able to go really fast. So when you look at a race and you do it and it says 3,400 at the top of it, you should recognize that you're not going to get 3,400 points. You're probably going to get around 10 or 20% less than that. I have a pretty good K-drive and some mods. I got 3,200 points for completing this race, where the first per place person got 3,400 points. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing these races. If you have some trouble um, completing the races and getting the required amount of points you need, just do longer races or actually look at the score of the race before you start the race. If you don't wanna waste your time, you don't wanna do a short race, you don't wanna not get enough points. Every time you finish all five of the challenges on one of these title cards, you get another little snippet of the quest. So you get to see a little bit more of the story of this quest. Um, this is usually played out in these little scenes um, that you get to click through, and they are narrated by Boone. Um, they're interesting, but I don't want to spoil any of them for you. This is the third set. Um, for this set, I'm going to show you how to do these tricks, and I'm going to show you how to do the shockwave kills. And I'm going to show you um, me doing like a grind for around a thousand points or something like that, and me doing a race. Um, to get the points that you need for this. Um, I always do these just straight into Orb Valis on solo. So here's the race that I'm doing for this one. This race gives you 4,600 points. Um, so I'm just going to start this race up and run through it. Um, it's not a terribly challenging race. Most of these are pretty easy. Um, they're just a little bit time consuming, but for the most part, they take like a minute, two minutes. So it's really not bad at all. As long as you just keep going through the rings, you can always check the minimap too if you're not sure where to go. This race gave me 4,289 points. Um, I needed 3,000 for this, but what you might have noticed at the start of the race was it gave 4,600 points to the person in the top place. So keep in mind you're going to get 10 to 20% less points than um, what the race is telling you that it's worth, um, especially if you're slower. Uh, one of the next things that I want to show you is how to get five slam shockwave kills. Um, so this one, you jump up in the air, um, and you want to double tap the left control and hold it on the second tap. So click it once, and then hold it on the second one, like a double tap, like click, click. If you get shot, um, you usually get knocked off your board. Um, it is easier to try to get the MOAs. If you just land on top of things, sometimes you do a little bit of damage too. So do a big jump. And usually you get this shockwave effect, and that's that's how you know you successfully did it. These slam shockwave kills are actually pretty annoying if you don't know how to do them. And especially if you're going for these aerial units, you have to land like pretty much right on top of them. And it can be really, really hard. For, for ground-based units, there's a little bit more of an AoE shockwave. So don't do what I did here. Um, instead, just go somewhere where there's like some small patrols of... Um, ground units walking around, just like basic corpus. Usually near the front of the map, there's a couple patrols. Um, this one's really, really easy, the nose planker. You just be going forward and do the right click. Um, you should be, if you've ever done any kind of K-Drive stuff, that nose planker should be really, really easy. Just go forward, jump, and right click. Um, that one doesn't require much explanation. Um, this is like the backside clutch one. Um, so again, what you want to do is you want to jump up in the air, put in your directional input. So right now the directional input is A, which is left, and then you want to press the mouse button after that so that you're grabbing it. And then once you have both those things going, that's when you do the third click. So this is one of those higher tier tricks. Um, so you want to jump, 
hit your directional input, click the mouse so that you have the clutch going, and then uh, right click the mouse so that you get the trick to go off. And a lot of these say 50 point. If you're having trouble actually getting 50 points on these, if you don't have any trick multiplier and you only do it once, you'll only get like 25 points or something like that. So you could do two or three of them in a row, or you can get the mod um, Inertial Dampeners, which starts off your combo at a times five. Right here is just uh, me showing you a brief little grind train on this, uh, this spot. You can usually loop in between this whole area. Not too difficult. As long as you kind of pay attention, you can usually loop between these. As long as you're grinding, your chain usually won't stop. So there's a thousand point trick. Um, that one's not too hard. Um, some of the later ones are definitely a little more hard. Um, the longer you have to grind for, the harder it is to do like the 1500 point trick. Right here, you're doing the backside clutch. This was actually um, kind of like the prerequisite for the previous one. Um, again, just be going to the left and hit the left click. Um, so if you did the previous one in the set three, um, you don't even have to do the right click. So the backside clutch should be easy after you did the previous one, which is like the backside roll or something like that. On one of the pages of the Wave Riders, um, the challenge is to get five seconds of airtime. There's a lot of ways to do this and there's a lot of places to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a place that I really like for it. Um, if you get the airtime mod and you fully upgrade it and you have like the double jump, usually you can achieve this almost anywhere. But if you don't have those things, um, it can be a little bit more difficult. So I'll show you a good place for that in a second. Right now, I think I'm just going to show you the tail clutch planker. So for the tail clutch planker, again, it's like a, a tier two trick. It's the same concept. You want to be going backwards and then you want to click in the mouse so that you clutch and then you want to click the right click on the mouse so that you do the the trick um, it usually helps to already be going backwards for this trick if you just do it in the air um, frequently it won't register um, that it was like a tail clutch planker um, again just do it a couple times if you can try to charge up like the full jump do the full tail clutch planker for that to get the the trick if you come down to the southeast side, um, there's a lot of really, really tall rocks and there's also some high drops that you can find in this area. Um, if you speed off this cliff and you get a good amount of distance, you could be able to get five seconds around here. I've seen some people recommend like this edge right here. Personally, what I like, um, there's like an Orokin dig site right here and it's this big Orokin derelict crashed ship. The reason why I like this one so much is because I'm pretty sure you don't have to do anything. You don't need any mods, you don't need anything. I'm pretty sure that this is just like a flat five seconds no matter what you do. This this spot is so high up and the ground differential is so large that I'm pretty sure you can just go straight off of this and you will get at least five seconds. So right here you can see that I have like a five or six second drop on this one or maybe even more, you know, maybe it's close to 10 seconds. This is a really, really long one. As long as you land at the end of it, um, you should get a five second air time. So again, that's the Orokin dig site in the southeast corner of the map. Um, that's the one that I thought was the best for this challenge. Um, one of the next steps for this, uh, in the process, I just wound up getting to rank five. Um, I ranked up to logical which is the max rank. I had maxed out all the K drives before I'm MR30. I just kind of started doing everything at one point. Um, you can grab any of these. You can grab Bob the Landing if you're having trouble with the Slam Shockwave too. Um, the one that I picked for this is I just picked the Compressa Blueprint because it's worth the most out of all of these. If you're having trouble with any of these challenges, feel free to take your time. Um, maybe rank up your standing a little bit and grab some of these mods that you need. The airtime, the maglev mod, and the inertial dampeners mod really help with getting the, um, the point values that you need for like the tricks and the K drive races and like 2000 points in a single trick or like perform five X times 10 combos. If you have inertial dampener and you have like a really good jump, it starts at plus five. You can just do five tricks in the air and usually it winds up being like a plus 10. Right here, I'm just gonna show you how to do the tail spinja. Be going in reverse, um, grab the clutch again, just like before, and just use the space bar instead of the right click 
and that's how you do the tail spin jet. And again, if you're already moving backwards, it makes it a lot easier for the game to recognize what trick you're doing. This is where you want to start if you want to get a really long grind chain on these pipes. If you start at the, the far end of the pipe for the grind chain, and this is why you might want maglev too, it makes it a little bit easier to grind. As long as you start at the end of these and you time your jumps effectively, you can ride this pipe near an infinite amount of time. Um, if you're not very good, you can ride this pipe for like at least 15 seconds. But um, if you're really good, you can get it for about 20 seconds, or you can just go infinite by turning back to this pipe and then jump over this and then just go to the right and it turns into a loop and it's just a big square. If you have trouble with this one, there's actually um, a circular area that you can go to. You can look that one up for like an infinite trick guide. Once you've completed all five pages, you get the Yarelli blueprint. Um, if you're wondering where to get the Yarelli pieces after you're done, you have to make a Vent Kids Bash Lab in your dojo. And then once that's made, it just sells all three of the pieces right there. Um, it doesn't seem to sell anything else in the Bash Lab right now. Um, it's been 114 days since my last video. Thank you guys all for checking this out. I hope I'm helping you guys out with this. I think I might start to make Advance Wars videos. I really like Advance Wars. It's a good game, and they're doing a remake soon, so that's what interests me. Thank you, guys.